Now, African economies must rethink export diversification if the economies are to survive economic shocks caused by not just the coronavirus pandemic, but also Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The UN Conference on Trade and Development says in its 2022 report on Africa development that countries need to boost the export of high-value services. We also need to expand private business access to financial services and tap into new financial technologies as well. Now, the report notes that the continent still relies on the export of a range of primary products in agriculture and mining, despite decades-long calls to diversify and move up the value chain. The report recommends that the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement is key for future diversification. All right, then let's explore this report in a bit more detail with Habiba Ben Barka. She's an economist and the head of the Africa section at the UN Conference on Trade and Development. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Um, so African economies diversifying the economies. I've heard this as a teenager. Now I'm a fossil at 35 years old and I'm still hearing the exact same story. What's gone wrong? Well, good evening. Uh, I think what went wrong is that uh, they, there has been a missing link, basically, in the strategies and policies that African countries' government have put in place to diversify. Uh, most of the diversification strategies have focused mostly on either diversifying away from one sector into it, another one, or maybe diversifying within the same sector, trying to add new products and services without ensuring that the conducive skills, technology, financing, and other structural factors are in place to kind of foster uh, diversification into more value added products and services. And in our report, we found that uh, the mi that missing link has been basically trading services. And trading services plays a significant role in terms of adding value to a specific product, a specific sector, whether it's in the agricultural sector, it's in the uh, mining, mining sector, it's in manufacturing and all. So uh, services can play a significant role in creating more uh, forward backward linkages and ensuring that uh, uh, some of the products that are produced then will add value, will be more competitive on the global market. And when we talk about services, we are not talking about the traditional services that we see mostly in African countries, which are, which are travel and transport, but we are talking about high knowledge intensive services, uh, such as uh, uh, business services, um, uh, techni uh, technology driven uh, services, information and communication technologies and financial services. Is, is part of the problem here, just to follow up on the argument that you're making here, is part of the problem here the fact that governments have also been the ones that have traditionally sort of taken the lead on trying to make these diversification efforts happen? So governments, for example, will say we need to diversify or move up the value chain in, say, the oil sector. And yet they invest in that and then they run them down, as we've seen, for example, with the oil refineries in Nigeria. And then is it an ideological issue where we think that this sort of diversification has to be state-led rather than just letting the private sector get on with it. Exactly. I, I think what has been the private sector has not been a key player basically in those different uh, drive to diversify. Um, but the private sector in Africa, let's not forget that um, it's mostly uh, small and medium sized enterprises uh, that make up about 60 percent of the private sector on the continent. And a lot of them are not really involved in those different type of uh, production processes. And because they, they have a, they face significant barriers when it comes to accesses to the to credit uh, and financing, being able to um, maybe tap on into the different markets that are kind of uh, open up to them now, under, especially under the CFT and the Continental Free Trade Agreement. So the report so is... In, sorry. Yeah, no, please, just finish, then I'll, then I'll come in a bit later. No, no, I said that there's now a need, uh, a strong call, the call we are making is for that private sector basically to be a key player alongside with the, with the government, with the public sector. It's not only for them to now take over, but it's to work more closely with the uh, public sector and ensuring that the... Uh, uh, diversification uh, process takes into account uh, the specific need and then they become kind of a player to kind of add uh, upscale some of the product uh, and services that are produced on the continent. So it's important, as you say, to move up the value chain. We need to diversify. We need to get into services. Wholly agree with that. And yes, there has been a digital revolution across the continent. Data access costs have been falling. We have a lot more mobile phones in the hands of individuals. Households are connected to the Internet. But Better education is just as important ele an element in making sure that this diversification sticks, isn't it? Are we doing anything useful on that front? Because it's, it's one thing to say that we need diversification, sure, we need to move up into high value services. But if you've got kids in primary school who are not numerate, who are not literate, I mean, it's a non-starter, isn't it? 
No, definitely. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, if you don't have the conducive skills, the appropriate skill in place, I, I mean, diversification cannot happen. So that comes to the to the education uh, systems that are in place. But also, what is quite critical is looking at the different technologies that African countries are embracing. Uh, we've been talking a lot about mobile banking. Uh, a lot of countries have made some in run into that space. But yet, when we are talking about technology, we are talking about some of these new technologies that are disruptive uh, to different sectors. Uh, the type of technologies that more events uh, in emerging markets have kind of relied on are the ones that are quite missing uh, a lot on the continent. So we are talking here about artificial intelligence, we are talking about robotic, we are talking about uh, blockchain technologies. So all those new uh, technologies are those are the ones that African countries need to embrace, and they can be embraced at every level, from primary school up to up to university and beyond university. So those are the technologies that really African countries need to maybe adopt the different uh, policies to uh, ensure that these technologies are, are embraced and they have the right policies in place to kind of promote uh, innovation on the continent. Um, so you do make the argument that the CFTA does hold promise as one of the ways in which economies can diversify. Um, a little earlier in the year, we had an interesting survey from Standard Bank that pointed out that a lot of SMEs, at least in their particular survey, were simply not aware of the CFTA and the benefits that it does offer. So we did see the start of limited trading. But there's still negotiations going on on agreeing on specific tariff lines and expanding that into services. Where do we stand now in your assessment on making sure that the CFTA actually works? Well, we have to give credit to the progress that has been done so far. Uh, we now have 43 uh, of the 43 countries out of the 54 signatories that have ratified the agreement and uh, in many African countries have now started uh, developing their own national strategies to make sure that the CFTA align with their own sectoral, the domestic sectoral policies, but also to make sure that they are able to mobilize the required financing to successfully implement the CFTA. Uh, what has been kind of um, not missing, but it's coming up. It's now what's the role of the private sector? Because a lot of private sector on the continent have been wondering, okay, this is a new agreement that's coming. What? How do we benefit for it? How do we uh, get more involved in it? And um, both the CFTA Secretariat, the AU, the African Union, and the partners such as the UN are working closely with African countries and the regional uh, institution to make sure that there's kind of more involvement, more there's more awareness about the CFT and its potential benefits, not only for government or for traders, but the overall economies uh, and especially the private sector. At UNCTAD, for instance, we are working closely with uh, different partners to make sure that there's uh, the e-commerce businesses are kind of a uh, better place, uh, position to make sure that intra-African tra trade is facilitated, especially under the, the new agreement.